Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Dave. And we're the hosts of the Chasing Tomorrow podcast, where we bring you stories that delve into the science and spirit behind intriguing people doing extraordinary things. Welcome to the Chasing Tomorrow podcast, episode 19. When you watch this recording, it's only going to be one day out from this year's Bigs Backyard. Now, there are no races happening in the world, almost anywhere. But Lazarus Lake has found out a way to, for all of us runners, to race one another internationally. Every single best backyard racer, ultra endurance runner that I know of in the world is going to be running on Saturday, October 17th. Some are in America, some are in Germany, and some are in Australia. I'm going to be running up in Canada, and I have the pleasure today of talking with one of my competitors, but also with my very good friend, Harvey Lewis, from Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And Harvey, back in 2017, was the assist to Guillaume's win of 58 hours. So Harvey ran an astonishing 57 hours. And I think the two of them were running for almost like a full day, just the two of them. Can't wait to talk to him about that. Harvey has also won Badwater in 2014, an incredible race where you run in, through the most stupid, ridiculously hot temperatures ever. Um, and he won that contest. Uh, he has a personal best of 158 miles in 24 hours, uh, multiple t uh, Team USA 24-hour competitor. Harvey Lewis, welcome to the program. Dave, thank you so much. And, and Joe, thank you. It's great to be here and especially to start to electrify ourselves as we're going forward to this big adventure. Yeah, so I, I'm just super stoked about this, Harvey, because, you know, I'm going to be racing against you. I'm going to be running up here in Canada. Uh, an undisclosed location in the Okanagan Valley in BC. Wow. Um, and, you know, there's going to be races in over 20 countries all around the world and where we're all going to be competing. So, so Harvey, before I ask you any more questions, I'm going to just talk a little bit about this concept because I think a lot of our viewers are going to be getting ready to sit down on their sofas for 48, 72, maybe longer, and uh, to understand this concept. So, so I'm just going to explain the concept of what the Bigs Backyard in 2020 during a COVID-19 world, what it looks like. So Lazarus Lake ended up calling me up on the phone maybe about three and a half months ago, and he said, Dave, I got some bad news for you. And he said, you know, the Bigs Backyard is not going to be happening in the way that it's happened in years past. But what I want to do is I want to have 15 of America's best runners all show up in, 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 uh, in Bell Buckle, Tennessee, and I'm going to run the course. But I want you to put together a team of, of Canada's best 15 runners. Although also 20 to 30 satellite locations all over the world, all running at the exact same time, and we're going to broadcast it. And so we're going to end up having 20 plus races of the world's best runners, all running backyard style races, running 4.18 miles every hour until you can't. And there'll be one person left standing in the world. And that, one, that person will be announced the world champion. And so Harvey, you've been asked to be on the American team. How does that feel? Well, it's, it's exciting. Uh, you know, honestly, the, the whole uh, you know, COVID-19 has been a challenge for the world. Uh, and it's presented new obstacles, um, but I look at it as, as opportunities as well. Uh, and uh, we just have to be creative in this time. And there's a way of doing things in such a way that uh, can be uh, measurably safe uh, and creative at the same time. So uh, we are starting to see uh, races returning at, a, at the small level in America, like races with 100, 200 people few hundred people uh, with all the, uh, the measures in place of mass at the start, at the finish, and aid stations, things like that. But this is the first uh, race that's like an international style race uh, with, with 2020 uh, that, that is, involves in-person races as well. You know, so I, I am excited to see the uh, dynamics of all the different like courses and different teams. And that, that just really is amazing. So I'm, I'm not sure how well they're going to be able to broadcast what's happening in every one of these satellites 
but for me, I'd love to go back and see what's happening in Australia. See what it's going to be hard for me to know exactly what's going on in those other places. But I am sending my positive energy to you because you know I honestly think that it's uh, we can actually get uh, you know our furthest uh, individually uh, by working with that that team dynamic within our own country, but also pushing our countries with the other countries. So I'm, I'm wishing you well, Canada. <laughs> we're going to have Absolutely. a great race. Yeah, and I'm wishing you too well, Harvey, because I know, you know, we're, we're going to have a giant whiteboard, and we can talk a lot about how this is going to look, but we're going to have a giant whiteboard, and we're going to see all the 20-plus countries and seeing how many runners are left in each one of those countries. And we want to be, in Canada, we want to be the last country in the world with all 15 of our runners still on the course. Wow. Uh, so what, what, do, what do you think? Is that, is, that, is that a reasonable challenge to say, hey, America, we I, think, I love we it. Think us I don't know if they, be they, the I, you see, what's interesting is you've developed as a team leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the other countries, I'm not sure if they have a team leader or mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, with the U.S., Laz is sending emails about what's happening at the race, but he's not, you know, per se, uh, you know, he's kind of like the orchestrator of the whole madness <laughs> so uh i like that idea a lot i think that's a great idea uh you can really try and pull everyone up and you know it's going to be interesting because the the caliber of running runners uh in in all these countries i have no idea about i really don't i know that uh you know there's a good chance that a large number of people will make it pretty far into the race so that that could be a real big challenge yeah, you know, Harvey, what's really cool in addition about a race like this is, and maybe if we try and take any benefit out of this crazy 2020 and COVID-19 is we're trying concepts we never tried before. Just mm -hmm. try. And are we entering a new phase that we will sort of like accelerate through, to, you know, like the work at home kind of model that you know, everyone was convinced the only thing that worked was being in the office. And now we're convinced that you can be distributed. That's a theme that might've taken 10 years to show itself when we got it done in a year. And so you now have this interesting dynamic of, you know, I don't even know if the word is virtual is a good enough word because this is an in-person, but collaborative race mm -hmm. in all geographies going on at the same time. It's a whole new competitive dynamic you've never had. I mean, because you're not, you almost, it's a little bit like you have to challenge yourself to compete with competitors you can't see. Mm -hmm. So like, you're, like, how do you think about that? Because you can't just sort of look over your shoulder and see Dave standing next to you in, at belt buckle and you're like, oh, it looks like Dave's, this, Dave's hurting. And now you got to sort of like go as long as you can because you can't make that judgment. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's 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 really uh, challenging. Like uh, I I enjoyed when we did this last spring the the virtual backyard. That was mm. uh, a lot of fun, and having it was over two thousand people participate yeah. and seeing like uh, just all the unique things that people were putting themselves through, like running inside of like a flat or running inside of a bar and and having like a little, little tiny area to run in, and just that's so incredible. But for me personally, like I really did, I it, it appreciated that opportunity. Um, but I I really wouldn't want that to be a standard opportunity with that experience because I I like actually the the the, the experience of of seeing the person next to me and yeah. feeling them and you know that kind of pushes me more than having some virtual experience. So I, I like what you said here that we got something really unique happening with the uh, oh, Big Backyard World Championship uh, mm -hmm. because it's really not uh, just, it's not virtual. There's gotta be some sort of name. We gotta maybe rename things, uh, but you have these individual satellites where you know, it, it, you cannot go beyond without a, someone who's assisting you. So you have to have at least two runners yeah. who are making it really far in order to be able to make it to like the final uh, several teams are like matched up with one another. And so it, it does make it challenging because I, I will have to conceptually think, well, while I'm at Biggs backyard, uh, you know, I'm racing 
really not just with my teammates, but I'm racing someone in Japan or over in Europe or Asia. And uh, I have, you know, it just is motivation for us to try to like pull that person further than maybe you would normally in a big backyard where you're like, okay, there's this yeah. two people, three people left, five people left. And you're like, oh, Jesus, why don't you just, why don't you just, just go out, <laughs> go ahead, go out. Now you're going to be like, especially, you better not go out. You better stay in here. You don't go out now. No, no, no. So uh, I'll get my dog excited here. <laughs> oh, it's all good. We can't hear him. But yeah. no, no, but Harvey, I completely agree because, you know, the way that I'm conceptualizing all of this is that, you know, last year at Biggs, I was down in Tennessee last year, and, and I saw some really incredible runners who stopped way sooner than what they needed to. And I think that the, the difference is sometimes you have these big, giant runners who are capable of a big, big distance. But we all know, Harvey, we all know when we have or are having a good day or a bad day. And when those runners who are capable of running 50 or 60 hours, when they realize that early on, 16 hours, 18 hours into the event, that they weren't going to win, that they were just not right, they, they quit. Right. So now, if you think about this as, as, you know, Canada versus Sweden versus New Zealand versus America, you know, if you're at 16 hours and you're like, oh, I'm having a bad day, like you, Harvey, let's say you're having a really bad day. You can't drop out at 16. You still got to like empty your tank. And so so that's where it becomes really interesting is because I think that if you and I, Harvey, were running against one, I'm constantly looking at you and you're constantly looking at me thinking, well, Dave's looking great. He looks like he's good for another 24 hours. I'm not, but I could look at you saying, oh, Harvey's looking great. He's looking good, looking good for another 24 hours. You're probably not, but we're going to be playing against one another. Now we have to play with one another in order to really lift up your country. How, how do you, how do you feel America's going to do with that? Well, you know what? It's nice with our, with our group there. We actually have uh maybe half the members have actually been team members on uh, the 24 hour team, mm -hmm. uh, team USA. And uh, so uh, I, I could see that, that that element helps because we've had that team element before. And I'm not sure how many of the groups out there in this um, you know, big uh, world championship have had that, but I, I think it's just human. Like, I think that we, you know, everyone has that within them that they can, uh, you know, pull it together and, and really like want to lift up their, their fellow teammates. So I, I, I don't really see why, you know, every team can't have something special happen with that and like push each other, you know, further than they've ever been before. So I, I, I could see every team really doing that. Yeah. And I could see that there's, you know, there's probably going to be leadership that steps up uh, all throughout the day. And, and Harvey, you might be that guy. Uh, or it might be Courtney DeWalter or whatever. And all she does really need to do is give you a look of like, hey, <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's... If I'm busting my ass out here, Harvey, <laughs> I'm expecting the very best of you. And, you know, it's going to be interesting who kind of takes on that leadership role uh, throughout, throughout, throughout the day. Do you have any guess of who, who that is going to be well, in, the, in, in the States? You know, I think that that's a really good point I hadn't really thought of before. Uh, I, I feel like it's sort of... Uh, I don't know, for my style, I like to lead by example. So I, I, I'm not one to, uh, I'm not like the Donald Trump of the world. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll say that. I'm, like, I'm about as far off to the side of that as you can see. I, I'm not going to go around uh, you know, uh, saying it's my way or the highway. But, um, you know, I, I could see us uh, really, you know, galvanize. And definitely uh, I could see, um, you know, Maggie's got a lot of experience uh, with it there. and you know, really, I have no idea. Like, I, it's it's such an organic um, experience. So someone who may be the least likely, um, who's just feeling more energized. And, and then also, I feel like it's not just something that's going to be like throughout the whole thing. I feel like that we all go through our highs and lows. So maybe when I'm in like a low period, you know, uh, Courtney might be, you know, come on, let's all cool. Come on, let's go, you know, and then, you know, Maybe six hours later, I'm in a little bit higher mode, and I'm like, no, no, you know, <laughs> kind of like guide may 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 be a part of that. But so I don't know. I really, I really don't. Um, we're also um, 
we're all pretty like talented in our own respect. So mm-hmm. I, I don't really see it as uh, necessarily as, as, as one person is going to become, you know, the leader in our group per se. But, um, you know, maybe with, with Canada, I, I could see that with yourself since you, you kind of organized the team to begin with. Now, do you feel like that, that's something that you could see? Yeah, I've, I've definitely taken in that, that leadership role, I think, because the race director and, and others have asked me to. Um, as well, too, I, you know, when it comes to my rare disease advocacy work up in, in Canada, I, that's something that I, I, I automatically do. I end up grabbing a piece of paper here. Um, and I'm gonna gonna show it to you. And it's it's uh it's during my last um, uh, uh, team meeting. We've been having weekly team meetings with the Canadian team, and I told them I'm gonna have a bunch of those as, as well to be like Kevin um, everywhere on the course. We're gonna have those everywhere. And so the the the, the term Ubuntu um, is an African term. I'm sure you guys know a lot about it. Um, and I know Nelson Mandela during his presidency. I utilized it a lot um, mm. and it really means community and coming together as a group and a team. And there's a, there's a saying that says, you know, I am because we are. Mm-hmm. And in order for you to be great, RV, I need to be great and I need to, to be my very best. And I know that you're going to be over there being your best because I'm going to be no better as you are executing over there as this unit. Right. And so I ended up um, giving a presentation last week where we have a runner on our team and he was the first guy that I called when it came to forming this team. His name is Kevin Barada. And Kevin um, finished second at a backyard race up here in Canada. Super long story, but I'll shorten up as much as I can. It was a terrible, rainy, horrible, the, our, our, my course flooded. I was a race director up here in Canada. It was a race called Outrun Backyard. And we knew coming into the race, so we flew Lazarus Lake up to re- help us race track this race. And we knew that the winner of this event needed to get a minimum of 32 hours to get a golden ticket to go down to the race down in Tennessee. And it was part of my race course was run on a horse racetrack. And -hmm. when it rains a lot, like the slop is like this. It it was disgusting. Um, Mm -hmm. Racers were screaming and yelling at me. Uh, It was kind of fun. And so, (laughs) but basically we got to a point at 27 hours that there was a runner, his name's Matt Shepard, he's on our team as well too. And it was obvious that he was gonna win. He looked a lot better than Kevin. And Kevin came in and Kevin is a SWAT officer in Abbotsford, BC, just the most incredible human being. And he came in and he looked at me and he said, like, I'm, I'm cooked, I'm done. Like, I, I can hardly take another step. And I look at Matt over here and Matt looks like impeccable. Like it looks like Matt <laughs> for like another 24 hours. And I, so I said, Kevin, I don't know if you know this, but Matt really wants to go down to Bell Buckle, Tennessee and compete at Biggs. And he has to have a minimum of 32 hours to get there. Uh, so wow. you being the assist, you have to run a minimum of 31 hours to give him the 32 hours. And what point was this? That was 27 hours in. Wow. And so I told him, I said, you know, I'm going to leave that with you. And what are you going to do with that? And he just, while I was walking away, I remember him saying, I'm going to do my best. Now, he, he drove himself for the next four hours. He, I don't know if he'll ever be the same. He looks like half the man. <laughs> he, was, he, he was terrible. Mm. He, was, he looked mm. horrible. Um, but he, he basically went to hell and back for a complete stranger in order for them to achieve their goals. So I'm going to have you know, notes up on the course, be mm. like Kevin, right? Be completely and that. utterly that, selfish. That, that's beautiful. That's amazing. And so like, but that's, that's the thing. That's what we're, we're trying to get more Kevins on our team. We're trying to, I mean, wouldn't it be, wouldn't all the world's problems be fixed if we were all a lot more like Kevin? <laughs> yes, 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 so yes. I, so to answer your question, Harvey, like when it comes to leadership of the American team, like I was down at Biggs last year and I was running and talking with Maggie quite a bit. And Maggie kept saying, Dave, you have to sign an agreement with me. Like we're going to be out here till, to, to do 72 hours together. Like you, we have to do this. And she took on a leadership role yeah. last year. And I could see yeah. her doing that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. We had her on the podcast, by the way, Harvey. And uh, she was great. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so tell us, who's on the American team, Harvey? Can you uh, name them? Jeez, that's a good question. I think, I, you know, I've been kind of, want, I was wondering that over the last week. 
<laughs> so I can tell you, like, uh, Olivier's on it, Maggie, uh, Courtney, uh, Michael Wardian. Uh, but to be honest with you, I, I, I lost the email because I've been getting so many emails with teaching virtual and things like that. And yeah. I meant to, to like email lads if you send us out the roster again. Yeah. Um, but I don't know every single person yeah. on the list. Right there. That's um, exactly. And I actually have been having that thought in the back of my mind. And maybe once I get off this, I'll actually email lads and ask them to send it to me again. Because I really like what you're doing with your team. And, you know, it's, uh, I, I like, it, it, it means so much, the whole I, idea of uh, feeling that genuine, like, uh, okay, I want to really see you do well. You know, that, that means a lot. And I, I love what Kevin did. That's incredible. And, and really, that's, I can see that really helping your team to go to another level. Well, Harvey, how, what do you think is possible in like a backyard style environment? Um, so the number, the furthest distance we've seen is Johan uh, run 68 hours with Courtney's 67 assist. Courtney, uh, Courtney let's see. Like so he ran, he ran 270, I think 200, was it 275 miles or? Yeah, because 72 would be 300, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it would be yeah, that, yeah, it would be right there. Yeah. But yeah. what do you do? You think that seventy-two is possible, or do you think a hundred is possible? Well, <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, uh, a lot has to do with everything uh, coming together in the right way. Uh, you know, the I, I I think back to when uh, Galimo and I like we we faced off, and uh, you know it. It was uh, really interesting to be head to head with him for about 24 hours. And the year before that, the race hadn't gone as far. It had gone to, I think it was like maybe 140 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the year before that, it had gone to 200 with Johan. And uh, Johan like fell off uh, in the race that we were in in 2017. In the first, I think it was maybe no, it was maybe the into the second, halfway through the second day. Um, and we, yeah, it, it's just the weather can impact things. Mm -hmm. So it, like for us, we had a lot of incredible torrential downpour that second day. And so that, that was, I'm not sure if that was too, it was more mentally uh, a challenge than maybe it was physically a challenge because it's just a, you're, you're cold and you're wet but maybe it doesn't drain you as much. Like I didn't get very sleepy the second night, but I was really sleepy the first night, mm. which I normally don't get that sleepy in the first night of a race. And then the trail was really muddy. So it was challenging. So having like weather can impact any of our 25 locations uh, mm -hmm. quite a lot. You know, that can be a big challenge, but uh, the sleep uh, in, the fact that you have to be really so you have to be you can't be you can't fall all the way out like for any one hour you know you don't have to be solid but you cannot be uh you cannot lose it for any one given hour so you know you, you see these six day races where people have made you know incredible paths uh but they also are on like some sort of surface where you know, they can run uh, 100 miles and then they can stop and like sleep for four hours or five hours. And so like this format where you're, you're moving constantly and you never really have a sizable chunk of time to actually sleep in any one given hour. I, you know, we're just experimenting with where the edges of that are. And like this race should give us some other idea about how, how far people can push under this kind of circumstances. Because it, it can't be measured the same way as you measure any other type of races uh, because of the fact that you have to you know, do uh, a, a 4.167 mile loop every hour. And then also you, know, you have uh, the you know, half a day is typically given to running on a trail and half a day is given to running on a road. And you know, so you have you know, you have to be strong in both suits and you, you know, there's so many things that are at play. Like I, I hate to throw out a number, like I, I won't do it like necessarily this time, 
but uh, in my mind, it's fluid. Yeah. Mm. Wow. You know, it's interesting, Harvey. Um, Dave and I interviewed this guy, Rourke Denver, who's a former Navy SEAL commander on our last podcast. And one of the conversations we had was sort of the, the battle in our head against what we feel is fair versus how we want to deal with that. And when we start to think it's not fair, we fall prey to the emotion versus what our physical or mental capability might be otherwise. And I think that there is some interesting dynamics in this. You mentioned one, for example, you guys will have beautiful weather in the US and in Sweden they have terrible weather and they're up there saying, this isn't fair, we have bad weather, you have good weather. Like, there are gonna be teams that are gonna have to deal with this, in quotes, I'm calling it fair, just as a generic word, but this, there isn't exact parity across any part of this. And so uh, to find that edge is going to take something even more, I believe, because you're, you're entering into a completely new realm here. This is now different than anything we've ever seen. So uh, it'll be fun to see how everyone sort of holds together during that. And then, you know, almost a little bit of like when you're bigs and everyone's there, you know, you're pretty much an independent. You know, you're like on your own. Then now, like in some sense, everyone there, like you could be giving, you know, group hugs each time. Okay, we're all together, ready. We're going to go. We're going to be stronger. You know, you, you, you look at Courtney, like Courtney, you know, you, I can, can see her getting a little tired. Follow me on this lap. Like, so really different. Like, I don't know how much, you know, there's the physical piece, but I don't know if there's much you could do to get ready for that mental piece. Any thoughts? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, the way that we are, like in the sense of like when you're you're using your mind and it's very challenging environment outside, you move into the inside. Sometimes you're really challenged inside, so you move back to the nature and, and uh, focus on the outside. And so for like this race, I see it as that uh, there are times where I'll be uh, maybe trying to gain that motivation, a little motivation from imagining that I'm not just competing with the group that's in front of me, but with people all over the globe. But then there's going to be moments where I could see that, that, that if I have a moment where I have that concept of like uh, unfairness in terms of like the courses or what, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot we could talk about in terms of like, the difficulty of the course and is ours, you know, one of the most difficult, I don't know. I mean, I, that's why I've heard, but I don't, you know, so, you know, it's like, uh, everyone's going to have like that same perhaps thought. And at that point, then I need to take my focus back just to where I am because ultimately the race will end for each of us uh, when it ends at our given location. You know, like in terms of like the actual, like we cannot go on beyond our group. So, you know, at some moments I may have to actually take myself away from that conceptualization of like other runners and other places that I cannot see and just focus on where I am at that moment yeah. with my group. You know, That's because uh, I, I know that from like doing that race this last spring i i didn't really like that idea of focusing too much on people that i cannot actually see you know so it, it's like that in and out you know i'm gonna use it for motivation to an extent but i'm also not going to focus too heavily on it because i could also see that derailing um derailing us psychologically because we're mm -hmm. thinking oh well our our course is tougher you know, or, or right now it's raining or right now, whatever it is, you know, it's dark here and it's light there. You know, it's like, right. whatever. You know, it's like, it, there's all kinds of things that you can put in your head that could mess you up. Yeah. And I completely agree, Harvey. Like, uh, you know, with the races being everywhere in the world, you know, we might say, Oh, the weather is terrible here. It probably isn't the worst out of all the races that is happening. Yeah, I mean, there will have to be one worse weather. I mean, it could be, there, there's a race in northern Sweden, for crying out loud. That's, you know, we're, and in Canada, we're putting our race in, in, in the Okanagan Valley because right now we should be getting a foot of snow. 
um, where I live in Canada. And so, but there's also parts of the world that are smoking hot. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I think that there's, yeah, there, there's going to be a little bit of that. And I, I think that, and then of course the elevation on the course, is it a flat course? Is it a tricky, I mean, bigs, um, you have to keep your eyes open because there's a lot of roots and rocks and, and yeah. But then some would even say, I remember I was, we were talking to Anna Carlson on 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 on, on uh, the Chasing Tomorrow podcast a while back, and, and she said that she loved the daytime course because it always gave her something to think about when it came yeah. to her foot for placements, and, and and she just but she got really bored at night. So every runner is different, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just thinking of. Uh... Yeah, every runner is different. Um, I always imagine whatever the circumstance is, it's the best circumstances imaginable. So, <laughs> right. Wow. You know, it's like, That's you got to like uh, put your mind in the right spot. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, now you guys have an undisclosed location. Is that because you don't want all the media to come in there and just like, sure. <laughs> so in Canada, and all, it's province by province. You know, everything's different when it comes to COVID-19 and quarantine our government comes in and, and takes charge. So or the permits and the, the permitting was quite difficult to get a race like this happening. Our permits are for uh, under 50 people. Uh, so we have 15 runners and one runner, one crew per runner. That's already right. 30. We're, and the broadcast that you're going to see is going to also be taking place at our location. So we have all of that. And so when it comes to, if, if, if anybody found out where we were running, we can't have spectators uh, coming by right. because then the police show up and they shut us down and that would be a crappy thing for that to, to, to occur. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. It, now this actually makes me want to get the whole list of every country as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have that. It would be nice if you would like publish that with uh, this podcast along, along with the names of all the runners who are running for Canada. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's all, really it's all on the you know, Biggs website. It's like, you know, Laz has got all that in See, there. I'm, what am I doing? I, I've, uh, I've been no, like no, no. sleeping on the homework. <laughs> but, it, but it's good. So like you, you right now are solely focused in, in what you're doing. So maybe that's the next question is like, we talked to Rourke Denver last week, like Joe was alluding to, and you know, he gave me some really good advice about mental preparation. So Harvey, you're, you're, you're six days out. Well, sorry, we're, 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 we're recording this six days out. You guys will be watching this the day before. Um, right now, you got to be locked and loaded. you got to be doing all those things. I mean, you're, you've done more of these things than I have. Um, what are you doing right now to, uh, to mentally prepare yourself for, for battle next week? Yeah, well, I don't know about that, Dave. You, you know, we, we all have our own strategies and, and all have our own uh, things we bring to the table. Uh, for me, it's uh, definitely getting my mind in the right headspace, and uh, I'll, I'll, I've been really focusing on my form. Uh, you know, also um, doing a little bit more yoga right now. Uh, did some today, um, but uh, yeah, really just kind of fine tuning, uh, trying to find that right mental headspace. Uh, getting in cold water. <laughs> I got in cold water today. Uh, so it, it's, it's mainly uh, also uh, trying to get everything in order for the race too. So like I've, I've been grading all my students' work and trying to set things up because I know that week of the race, I'm, yeah, I need to have everything in order for my sub and everything like that because I'm planning to be there for a long time. <laughs> so, so it's... Uh, the, there's a lot of organizing that's that I'm having like in place now. Um, also starting to put my food in place. Uh, you know, I eat all plant-based foods. And I really feel that that has an immense impact on my like uh, longevity in races and like the ability to not go through bad periods because I don't get any dairy or meats that take, they're tougher on the stomach to digest. And so I'll, I'll be organizing like a suitcase of like foods I'll be taking down there and going to all my favorite grocery stores this week. <laughs> so not just one grocery store, I'll go to Costco, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Fresh Time and get all my favorites at each location. So there's a lot that goes into my preparation in terms of like my, my planning. Uh, meeting with my team. I've already met with my, my crew member. Each, each of the American uh, runners are allowed to have one crew member as well. 
And uh, I might remember Judd has a lot of experience. We actually met in Marathon de Sables, and wow. he's been out to Badwater uh, with me this summer. Cool. And he was the first one there with me in 2017 for Biggs. He was my crew there. So he and I have already had this experience together. And the crew member is so crucial okay. to the success yeah. of the team and the runner. You know, like, uh, so, I mean, that is huge. You know, so having, having my buddy Judd, who's got, a, you know, his mindset is the right mindset, but also his, uh, he knows when to uh, give me certain types of like, you know, foods I have available and also like gear and you know I, i'm pretty much a self-sufficient runner in the sense of like i don't rely on my crew to tell me what to do i'm, I'm usually asking my crew for items uh, but he and i just will be very uh focused together and i look at this as like a game of risk i don't know you ever play that that board game oh risk? yeah yeah so for me, it's like, I, I'm, this is my favorite thing. I, honestly, I was blown away in 2017 when I did the ultra. Like I had like originally made a post back in 2016 for New Year's, right? I said, I, I presented four races and I asked like people who followed me, which race uh, they would want me to do and whichever one it was, I was going to go running. And uh, including a six day race, a race in Oman and like some other race. I can't remember at the moment, but they overwhelmingly selected Big's Backyard. Mm-hmm. And then when I, when I went out there, I think that a lot of people thought I wouldn't do as well as I did uh, because a lot of people think that because I've been on a 24-hour team that I'm just a road running ultra runner. They don't realize that I love trails as much as I love road. And, you know, just because I haven't won Western States or <laughs> a Leadville, it doesn't mean that I'm not uh, really determined when it comes to a trail race. So, mm-hmm. you know, getting out there in, in bigs, like, uh, you know, I think a lot of people didn't think I would do that well. And, you know, I just, I, I, I looked at what Johan and the others were doing, and I, I, I did not think that was very strong. <laughs> and I told Johan that. Because they were just race up that hill, <laughs> the first hill, every single time. And I was just in the back, and I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to see what happens. And then, you know, the next year, Johan and everyone else was walking up that first hill, and I was like, yes. Johan, so damn, you you took my style here, buddy. <laughs> you know, I was like, but um, so, you know, there's strategies that are uh, that I've learned from pacing. Uh, I, I do a lot of pacing races and with marathons and also with my – um, with those 24-hour experiences, I felt like helped mm-hmm. with Biggs. But Biggs is just a very interesting race. It's mm-hmm. it's so so interesting because, you know, you could have someone who seems to be invincible at, at mm-hmm. uh, you know, 24 hours or 36 hours. And for any of us, we could all, you know, have a moment where we just fall flat on our face and right. – and it's it. Like, we don't feel like there's any chance we can go any further. So it's kind of neat because anything can happen. And it's, it's too hard to predict. Uh, you know, any, any person is, you know, uh, ahead of anyone else and the chance of win. Like, I think of the 15 Americans, any one of us uh, could be the last person, mm-hmm. hypothetically. You know, you, do, you don't know who that, that the person is going to be with you at the end. Uh, you don't know. It's, it's really interesting. And like the year Galimo and I did the race, uh, I remember distinctly it was somewhere in uh, the second day when there were still other runners, maybe like six runners, five runners left. And, and he was like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. And uh, his crew like really had to badger him to get back in there. And it's really nice to see. I really liked running with Galimo. He was, he was really uh, – a, a fun guy to run with and he didn't mm-hmm. joke around in such a way that wasn't like um it was like brothers you know it's like mm-hmm. it was playful and uh not um conceited at all but it was just like just badgering you a little bit but in such a way that it was uh you know positive like so i i, I enjoyed that dynamic and and uh 
yeah, it was really, it, it really just such an incredibly interesting race. I think that's what mm-hmm. draws people in it, with, with lads being the, the poem, poetic, uh, mm-hmm. the poet yep. <laughs> as well. You see the arts uh, find their way into this race and uh, just the, the, the human spirit. I think that's what draws us to ultra running. Probably one of the greatest things that draws us to ultra running is just that element of the human spirit and how strong uh, or how far a, a human being can push themselves. And in bigs, it, it gives us the platform to see that perhaps uh, more than any other race. Mm-hmm. And, and you, really, you really can see that dynamic play out. And, it's, oh. and you just wonder, like, well, how long is it going to go? <laughs> it could go for a Absolutely. long time. Yeah, so, it's so- it, it, go on, Dave. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree with you. It's, uh, you know, when it goes down from 25 runners down to 15, of course, we're starting with 15 next week and, or tomorrow. Um, and then when it goes down to five and four and three and two, it's, it's such a unique, intimate relationship you have with each one of the runners. And you, you're kind of sad whenever they drop out, even though they propel you one step further to, you know, to, to winning the, the, the golden ring or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, so Guillaume is going to be, what, yeah, we're, we're, I, don't, I have no <laughs> idea what we're winning. Yeah. So, but Guillaume's of course can be leading the, the, the French team. He's going to be, um, competing there. So you, know, one question I like asking a lot of backyard racers is that, you know, everybody has a different strategy. And my thought from my race last year at Biggs, I got 52 hours was that speed is rewarded on the course. You know, I, um, I didn't, I don't feel like, so Harvey, your, your, your 24 hour, you know, you know, uh, distance is a very, very good distance. You're one of America's best 24 hour runners. So that means you have speed underneath you that you could run relatively comfortably at a bit quicker of a speed. And a lot of people say that in you know, backyard racing, you know, speed is not rewarded, but I think it is because having an extra three minutes or five minutes off of your feet, you know, I found that it was, it was a great yeah. reward. What do you think, Harvey? Uh, is speed rewarded on a backyard style course? And if so, how how much is it rewarded? How, how much does it matter? Yeah, like well, that that's a great question. You know, it it really uh, depends on a lot of things. So, uh, there are some runners who are incredibly fast in a hundred k race, or they might be even like a two twenty to two thirty marathoner. Mm-hmm. Uh, that person. Uh, you know, they, they could benefit by being quicker and using less energy to complete their lap uh, versus someone who might be out there and like experiencing like a backyard ultra, like trying to go for like a, you know, maybe 50 miles and it's their first experience with this. And maybe for them, they really have like, they're, they're working at a pretty hard effort level just to, to finish in 56 minutes every loop. So, you know, like that element is, is definitely pretty big if you're having to put more effort into like just uh, getting underneath the time limit and then you, you find that you have lit too little time to recuperate in, in the sense of just getting up to drink or eating a little bit and stuff like that. So, um, but in terms of the, the loops, uh, yeah, you know, like I, 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 I don't, I'm gonna be telling everybody my strategy. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, honestly, I feel that there's a sweet spot. So I think mm-hmm. that there really is a sweet spot. And for me personally, I'm not interested in uh, you know trying to finish a loop um, too quickly. Uh, I'm more interested in finding that sweet spot. So uh, you know, for me, like. No, it's possible. Like, uh, yeah, I don't really want to run uh, 57 or 58 minute loops. Mm-hmm. Um, there may be a few in there that I just throw in there for the heck of it, just because I want to see what that is. Um, you know, or, or uh, you know, but, but uh, yeah, I think you, you need to give yourself enough time so that you can get something to drink. And I mean, you have your, your water bottle you're going to bring with you on each loop, but it's kind of nice to like uh, get more of something into yourself mm-hmm. when you're going for so many hours. I mean, your body needs nutrients. 
Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, having enough time to, to take that in and then also, you know, to get off your feet for uh, a few minutes would be very powerful. But there's also that difference between the daytime and the nighttime mm-hmm. and the trail and the road. Mm-hmm. So it, for me on bigs, uh, you know, uh, I know this year they've adapted one of the loops because of the daylight or something like that, I think. Uh, so we're actually technically like 11 hours on the trail and 13 hours on the road, I believe. Um, but uh, the the to me for me to do an equal effort level um, loop on the on the uh, trail versus the road, it would be a difference of about three or four minutes, maybe four minutes, perhaps. So like. Uh, yeah, so I'm not trying to um, make any loops faster than any others. It's going to be equal effort level. And, uh, you know, this is still like a project in work. So, you yeah. know, my, it, it's definitely finding that magic spot, that sweet spot is, is crucial um, in my belief. Like I, and I don't really think that the person, I, in my mind, uh, I'm no, no, no offense to anyone else, but in my mind, usually the person that's leading the race after 12 hours uh, on each loop is not the person that's one of the final two. But mm-hmm. that's just what I what I would think. And uh, so, by all means, go after <laughs> like lead, leading the, the loop. Every you know, that whoever wants to do that in each country, go for it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, maybe that'll be me some loops, but. Yeah, I don't see that as being uh, necessarily uh, that sweet spot. But yeah, that's interesting. And so, when do you head down to uh, Tennessee? So uh, it may be A or B. So A is uh, if I'm a permit. This next week happens to be my last week of teaching virtually. So there might be a chance that I could teach virtually from uh, the hotel on Friday. Uh, or B, I drive down after school on Friday. So when I did the the race in 2017, I left work, ran home, got my stuff in the Jeep, and I drove down. I got down there at like 11 or 12 at night, and I slept in the back of the Jeep. (laughs) And then I like got up the next morning and did the race. Uh, And I did that again in 2018, but I knew knew then I wasn't actually going to run the whole race like I had called last the night before and said hey would you add me back into the race you know, I had a foot injury from doing the Appalachian Trail in 2018 where I had really did a number of my my toe like like toes were like split like that and um, I went to a appointment with a podiatrist on Friday and she said I shouldn't run so now I went and did the race the next morning. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. But I knew I was only going to run like a marathon just to get out. And I knew I saw the shirt was like Muhammad Ali. So I was like, I cannot pass up the opportunity to go down there. And then last year we didn't do, I didn't do the race along with some of my team members because we were in all the uh, 24 hour world championship in France. So really this has been a race that I've been, has been gnawing, that I've been gnawing yeah. to get back to since mm-hmm. 2017. And I've taken off more work. We'll, we'll just say it at that. Like there, there's more more work days are off for, for the week after. So for the week of the race. That's amazing. Yeah, so, so Harvey, like with um, with our podcast and Chasing Tomorrow podcast, we, we normally try to conclude, you know, every interview with, with asking our guests, you know, what's what's in store for you tomorrow? But knowing very well that we're broadcasting this on Friday and tomorrow <laughs> is Big's Backyard. And just very well what you said last that you're you're taking more time off. This is this is definitely an A race for you. Um, you know, not necessarily asking about what what distance you're 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 wanting to, to to shoot for, but really kind of what are you expecting from your race tomorrow uh, at Big's backyard? Um, are you are you thinking you're gonna have a personal best distance event? Uh, or are you just gonna say I'm gonna go out and hammer lap by lap and we'll see what, what happens. Um, are you uh, wanting to win the world championships and be the last person standing in the world? What's, uh, what are you chasing tomorrow? 
Well, geez, that, David, that's a good question. <laughs> I better start <laughs> really thinking it. about that. Uh, yeah, I, I really want to have a fun time. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that's that's the, the baseline is have a fun time. Uh, you know, be honorable with my teammates. Uh, you know, that that hopefully we all have a better experience because we're all there. And uh, also, uh, I hope to inspire some people, like wherever they are, uh, in whatever they're dealing with. And uh, I think that's one of the things we like to do through running is to remind people of what you know, the world and what we can do uh, as individuals is, is oftentimes so much further than we ever imagined. Mm. So, you know, with, with that being the case, uh, I'm just going to like, I hope to be able to go as, as far as humanly possible and to do something very special, but I, I don't know what that is. So, well, 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 well and I, I really hope to give you guys energy and, and wish you all the best as well. Mm-hmm. Well, Harvey, you know, um, that's, that's a perfect answer. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I have, there's only no advice one could give, but I'll give one perspective as you walk into it. Whenever I've taken on some of these and never to the level and degree that you and and Dave have, but I always write down a little note to myself, which is that the lows will be the highs. Mm -hmm. That that's what we're going to find out about, right? That's, that's the moment that it's all matters because yeah, if it was easy the whole time through, I don't know that that would attract either of you to go do this. Right. And so if there's that one moment when you're like, you're finding that like, oh, wow, mm-hmm. that's what you went for. And mm-hmm. that's what you, you get back really at the end of the day. And that's what you'll carry forward for the rest of your life. And, and I think to your teammates and to the rest of the people you interact with, you know, Harvey will always just be a better person for that because mm-hmm. your perspective will be just that much further along in this sort of dynamic of, you know, human development and personal fulfillment. So best of luck with that. I think you're going Absolutely. to do really well. And um, I'll be cheering on uh, both of you guys just watching. I'll be doing as many miles as I can over the weekend. Uh, like at least there'll be some spirit heading your direction. And um, oh man, I'm just looking forward to this. I'll be one of the most incredible events ever. Hmm. I really appreciate that, Joe. I will take that in. All right. Absolutely. Good luck, yeah. and uh, we'll talk to you. We'll talk to you on the back end of this one. How's that sound? That is great. It's been really nice. Really nice talking with you guys. Absolutely. Thanks, Harvey. Best Take of luck, care. Harvey. Have fun out there. Hey, best of luck as well. And uh, I'll be definitely thinking of you guys. So good luck. You know, I, it, it means a lot to be able to like not just be running with the Americans, but run with the Canadians and all the rest of the teams. That means a lot. So thank you. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon. See you on the other side. Hey, all right, cheers.